Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to create your very own copy link input field using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So what is a copy link input field? Well, it's going to look something like this. This input field here has the ability to be copied very conveniently. So if I was to click on the input field, it's going to select and now I can press Control C on my keyboard to of course copy that text or even better, if I click on the copy icon, it's going to copy the link or the input, whatever it's inside there, to the clipboard, and I can just press Control V and paste that content. So this right here is very easy to do, and it's gonna provide your user with a very convenient way to copy data from your website or application. So let's see how to do this right now, starting from scratch. So going inside this index HTML, I have this currently. I've got no CSS. HTML or JavaScript included. So starting from scratch, the very first step in creating this is gonna to be to include the Google Material Icon library. So we're gonna be using Google Material Icons to provide us with this copy icon right here. And I'll leave a link to this in the description below. This right here is the setup instructions for Google Material Icons. I can simply copy this link tag here and paste it inside the head of my HTML and now I can begin to use the icon library. Now, I wanna quickly show you the icon library itself. So in the second link down below, you're gonna find this here. You can do a search for something like copy and we can see we have this content copy icon right here. If I click on it, it tells you how to use it on your website. It's a simple span tag. So we're gonna be getting into this very shortly, but for now, we're ready to go because we of course have the icon library included. So let's begin inside the HTML for this input field. The very first step is gonna to be to create a new div with a class of copy link. And this right here is gonna be the main container for both the input field and the button on the right side to of course copy. It's gonna have the input field itself with a type of text and also a class of copy link input. You may also include a value here for of course the uh, link or whatever content you like. As an example, I'll just uh, do the YouTube URL, something like this, okay? Now dropping down below, we can create a new button. Now, it's important to add a type of button right here. If you don't and you click this button, it might submit a form. So to avoid that, we can just say, uh, you know, a type of button there and a class of copy-link-button just like that. Now we can begin to include that copy icon. Going back to the material icons website, I can copy this span tag or this text right here. Go back in here, I'll press Control V and I can paste in this HTML. So now we should see the icon on the page. I'll just go back inside the browser here and we can see upon a refresh, we have this right here. So we have the input field and of course the button on the right side. So now we're gonna head into the CSS and of course apply some styles to convert this right here into this right here. Okay, let's go back inside the HTML and head up into the style tag. So the very first step here is gonna to be to target the copy link container. Now, in order to get the input field and the button close together, we're gonna be using a display of flex, okay? A long size and maximum width here of 250 pixels. You can put whatever width you want inside here, but if I save this, go back in the browser, refresh, we get something like this, okay? Let's head back inside the HTML now and include a CSS variable. So we're gonna say dash dash height and make this 36 pixels. So now this right here is just saying that we're defining a new CSS variable called height with a value of 36 pixels. So now I can reuse this variable in the CSS to of course reuse this value. I change it once and it changes everywhere. Okay. We're gonna be seeing how this is gonna be used very shortly, but for now we can drop down and target the copy link input field itself. So when it comes to the input field, we can give this a flex grow of one. This right here is gonna guarantee that um, this input field is gonna take up as much space as I possibly can. Okay, so make the input field the most space of the whole container and the icon, you know, obviously in the right side, taking the smallest amount of space as possible. 
Let's add us some padding here of zero top and bottom, eight pixels left and right. Then we can just say a font size of 14 pixels and a border of one pixel solid and then triple C. I'll just save this here, go back in the browser, refresh and we get something like this, okay? We've got that border, we have that padding and we can now move on. So you can see here, we have the border on the right side. We're gonna actually remove this and allow the button itself to instead have that responsibility of having the border. So back inside here, we'll say border dash right of none alongside an outline of none also. And save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and we get something like this. Cool. Let's head back inside here now and just add a hover pseudo class. We'll say copy link input colon hover and give this a background of triple E when the user hovers over it, back in the browser, refresh, and we get this right here, okay? Now, this is the main part, it's gonna be the button itself. So. To target the copy link button, we'll just say copy link dash button and then give this a flex shrink of zero. This is gonna ensure that um, the button is not gonna be shrinked by the content of the input field. Okay, just sort of like a bit of a, a safety net to guarantee the width we're gonna be setting and the height we're gonna be setting. A width is gonna be using the CSS variable before of height. So it's gonna be a width of 36 pixels. The same goes for the height. This right here is a second benefit of using a variable because once again, you make you know you, you make your value in one place and then it's going to you know be present and give us that nice square down here. Okay. Let's also give this a display of flex and align items of center and a justify content of center. So these right here are going to ensure that the icon is going to be centered horizontally and vertically. Let's stop here, save, go back in the browser, refresh, and we get something like this, a perfect square for the button. Let's continue now. We're going to be also giving this a background of triple D, just like that, and a color of dark gray for the actual icon itself, alongside an outline of none and a border of one pixel solid and then triple E, the exact same border used up here because like I said earlier, this border is now gonna essentially take place of the border right, which was set to none right above. Save this back in the browser, refresh, and we get this right here. Okay, not looking too bad so far, although I did make a mistake here. This border should actually be triple C instead alongside a cursor of pointer to give some user feedback back in the browser refresh and we get this right here. The last bit of CSS is gonna be to have that hover pseudo class on the button and we'll just say here a background of a medium gray, uh, triple C just like that, save back in the browser refresh and we get something like this. So we are now ready to write some JavaScript and of course make this thing work. Let's go back in the browser or back in the text editor and hop down inside a new script tag. So we're gonna be selecting every single copy link div on the page because you might have multiple, right? So we're gonna apply the same logic to every single instance you have. In this case here, we've only got one, so it's gonna work fine. Let's go down here. We're gonna say document.query selector all. So select all elements with a class of copy dash link. We can now say for every single copy link you have, we'll say copy link container, grab hold of that. Then we'll just say, we're gonna be defining a few constants. The first constant is gonna be the input field. So once you have the copy link container, so this div right here, we're now gonna say, look, dot query selector and select the copy link input. So go from your parent and select the input field with that class, right? Cool, let's do the exact same thing now for the uh, copy button, just like that. And we'll say copy link button, okay? Let's also make a new constant for the input field's text. So we'll say here, text equal to input field dot value. So we have both the input field and the button, and we have the current text value of the input field, okay? Now, 
the first step inside here is going to be to make it so when I click on the input field, let's make it select everything. So we'll say here, input field dot add event listener. When the user focuses on the input field, we're just going to say here, basically just uh, input field. Okay. Input field dot select. So calling the select method on input fields is going to make sure the whole content is going to be selected. Let's save this, go back in the browser, refresh, click on the input field, bang, and everything gets selected due to our dot select. All right. Now the main part is going to be that button. So let's say copy button dot add event listener. When the user clicks on that copy button, we're going to run this function. This function is going to say input field dot select. So we're just going to select the entire content again, just like we did in the first one with the focus event. Now, once the content is selected, okay, we're going to say navigator dot clipboard dot write text. Okay. Write text is going to then take in the text data. Now this select doesn't actually do anything. But I do like it because it gives the user a bit of feedback. So you can potentially remove this if you wish to. Okay. But either way, this right text is just going to copy or it's going to perform the action of copying. Right. So we can actually stop right here, go back in the browser, refresh. Um, I might just say, you know, something like uh, Dom, for example. I'll copy, then I'll do control V. And we get YouTube. All right, that didn't work. Let's try and figure out why. Um, let's go back inside here. Ah, of course, my mistake. This text should actually be retrieved inside here because when the page first loaded, it's going to grab the old text. Let's try again. Back in the browser, I'll just uh, refresh here. I'll type out DOM. I'll press copy and I'll press control V and we get DOM right there. Perfect. Okay. Now, one thing I forgot to mention was on the input field, make it read only. That way the user can't actually change it. it. Makes it a bit easier for them and you. So that's optional, but in my case, I'll make it read only. So now obviously I can't just change that value. Uh, that's I think appropriate in most cases. Try again, I'll click copy, control V and it obviously paste that there. And like I said, this select isn't actually required, but it does make it, well, it gives you a bit more user feedback. Anyway, let's drop down here and do one last thing. We're going to update the text to be copied. Then two seconds later, put it back to the original text. To achieve this, we're just going to say here, input field dot value equal to copied once it's been copied across. Okay. Then we'll say set timeout. And we'll just say here, look, you know, input field dot value equal to the original text after two seconds. All right. So once two seconds have passed, let's take it from the copy text back to the original text. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, press copy. It says copied. Then it goes back to normal text. And that's all. So that's right there is how to create your very own uh, copy input field using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.